Fans are once again shocked at merch prices at the United States Grand Prix. AJ Allmendinger gets to race for a championship, and Alex Bowman had a really bad week. Welcome back to Break Hard. I'm Matt. Back in the studio today. Obviously, yesterday from the Teresa Earnhardt update, I went green screen because I was not at home in my office. Uh, body disappeared at one point there. It wasn't even wearing camo. Just disappeared like I was a ghost. Not ideal in that situation. Back in the studio, though, let's talk about merch prices at the United States Grand Prix. Because every time Formula One has a race in the United States, fans lose their mind over the merch prices, which is valid because they are ridiculous. We're talking about 200% markups in some instances. And you don't have to buy it, right? Like you don't have to buy anything when you go to the racetrack. And it is a simple lesson in supply and demand. Small supply, big demand, prices go up. They make it the, at the convenience fee. It's right there for you. Instant gratification. But fans at Coda this weekend for the United States Grand Prix in Austin, once again, notice that prices were ridiculously high. Starting off with this picture right here of the Alpine and Stake Sauber hats, you can get a bucket hat from Sauber for $95. Doesn't even come with a Valtteri Botas signature or anything like that, and it's probably not going to look like that next year either. So, hey, you get to enjoy this hat for the next five races. On the Alpine side, at least they didn't copy McLaren with their hat design, but $110 for an Alpine hat? Yeah, no thanks. Not a chance I'm ever going to do that, unless, of course, I will actually convince them to sell their entire team to Cadillac, then I would be on board with that. They maybe, however, did sell their uh, power unit IP to Cadillac, which would be very interesting. We'll probably do a video on that in the future, but not spending that. However, if you're looking for a V-carb hat, a racing bulls hat, in memory of Daniel Ricciardo, RIP in peace, he's still with us, but you know, he's not there anymore, so we need to leave our memories in that weird memory book that they have set out for him. You can get a hat for $80, which honestly steals, seems like a steal from Formula One standards. Over on the Ferrari side of the tent, first off, the merch tents at uh, the Formula One race at Coda are set up exactly how NASCAR should still have their setup, where it's the tent style. You can walk up to it and get it that way instead of having to go and, uh, you know, go up to the haulers as they do it now. I still think that NASCAR should go back to the old tent model where you can walk in, touch everything, look at it, buy it that way. But I digress. I'm so win a losing battle. I'm not going to win. Over at the Ferrari tent, though, $225 for that blue Ferrari uh, team shirt, the one that they said was sold out, but now they miraculously still have some when it comes time to sell in America. Yeah, don't buy that for $225. In fact, don't buy any of this stuff for the prices that it is there. I implore you, instead of spending that $225 to rent a car in Austin and drive as far away as possible from spending that money, at least you'll have the memory of a road trip rather than the stupid blue shirt that you're never going to wear again. Same with a cap for, what is it, $120 as well. Sticking with the Ferrari tent real quick, this jacket in the lower right corner, this red and yellow one, that monstrosity that you would never, ever consider wearing anywhere other than a racetrack. $335. Don't buy that. Go adopt a dog. Adopt five cats. Do anything with it. I don't care what you do with it. Light it on fire, in fact. That might actually be a better choice of using your money than buying this stupid jacket. You're going to look like a buffoon if you wear it out in public. And I know somebody's going to wear it in public. They're going to wear it to a Kroger. Um, they're going to wear it to a Safeway, whatever the grocery store chain is in your area. And they're going to think that they are cultured. They're going to think that they are superior than you. They're going to think that, oh, I have a European influence. I'm Italian. I'm a Ferrari fan. And then they're not going to be able to name you any Ferrari drivers outside of Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz. And they're going to be like, well, we're getting Lewis Hamilton next year. It's like, buddy, you know nothing about this. However, I do know somebody will buy this jacket. They will wear it to their local brewery. It's probably a small brewery, not the popular one in town, but the smaller one, the more the cool kids go. And they're going to wear that there for their local Formula One watch party. And they are going to think they are the coolest kid in the room. And hats off to you if you think that, because I would love to live in that level of delusion at times. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I just don't like that jacket. Just realize what shirt I'm wearing as well. Moving on to <laughs> more stuff that was there. If you're a Red Bull fan, good news. It is Texas. You can get a cowboy hat that looks like you should probably stand alongside Jen Sturger at Florida State about 15 years ago for $145. It is Texas after all, right? You need a cowboy hat. You can also get the uh, Austin uh, specific Red Bull hat as well for $110, and you can get the Sergio Perez team hat for $115, which I don't think is a very good use of your money because you're constantly flirting with the idea of is he going to be back? Is he not going to be back? And that might just seem like a waste of money. Good news, though. However, 
there is some reasonably priced merch at this event. You can go over and buy Coda branded merch, like a Coda shirt or hat or whatever. Shirts are running between $25 and $40, which I think is what most people are comfortable paying at most events, right? Like $45, $40 is probably the top end of, I think, where most people are willing to spend their money. So you can definitely go over there and get that. And as always, at most Formula One races, especially in Austin, there is generally a clearance tent from like years past of old merch that you can go in and buy there because for the most part, a lot of times it's just some sponsors moving around on the shirt. Generally, the stuff from a year or two ago is going to look pretty similar to what you have now. And it's totally fine. And you're going to save some money in the process. You will not find a Logan Sargent hat there, though, because Williams is still trying to sell those full price at $95. Listen, Logan Sargent's never going to be a Formula One driver again. You should not spend your money on that because, well, you're going to just walk around supporting a driver that doesn't ever have a shot of getting back to Formula One. But hey, maybe you want to wear it to an IndyCar race or an IMSA race. You could possibly get it signed there uh, because you will actually be able to have access to the drivers there. So. Formula One merch prices remain high, uh, but again, you don't have to buy it. And I know people are going to be like, hey, get your money right, and you can just go out there and buy it. It's the principle. For me, it always comes down to the principle. Do I want to spend money on it? Do I think it's worth that? No? Okay, then I'm not going to buy it. Could I? Sure. But do I want to? Absolutely not. Not a chance in hell I'm ever going to spend $110 on a hat. NASCAR hat, those uh, 47 rope hats that everybody is wearing now and every driver seems to have, are about $35. And they look far better than most of the stuff that is at a Formula One race now. So, uh, yeah, don't have to buy it. But always expect the merch prices to be high and expect them to be high at the uh, Las Vegas Grand Prix next month as well. AJ Allmendinger had a night in Las Vegas that he will not soon forget. On Matt Collins' birthday, his team owner, AJ Allmendinger, took them to victory lane, leading 102 laps of that race, and he now gets to race for a championship in Phoenix. He locks himself into that championship race with his win, and it could not have come at a better time. That college team has struggled this year mightily. They, of course, have three wins with Shane Van Gisbergen on the road courses, but when it comes to ovals, they've been there in the top 10, but they haven't been able to take that next step to get to victory lane, and AJ Allmendinger gets them there on Saturday night. But it didn't come out without a massive battle that he and Ryan Sieg had. Ryan Sieg in that 28 car brought a ton of speed, like it was Texas back in the springtime. Luckily, he didn't have the same heartbreak but he still had a certain level of heartbreak. With about five laps to go in the race, Sammy Smith comes to a stop on the backstretch uh, of the track, bringing out a caution, setting up a green-white checker, and I think without that caution, Ryan Sieg had a really, really good shot of passing AJ Allmendinger because his car just wasn't as strong on the short run. He, in fact, did pass Allmendinger and then lost the front end of the race car, rear end of the race car, kind of lost both ends of the race car, saved it. That allowed AJ to get back around. The Sammy Smith caution certainly sparked uh, a firestorm on social media because the eight car comes to a stop, says he has no power, and then the caution comes out and he miraculously is able to fire the car up and drive it back to pit lane, uh, which some people argue is race manipulation. I would argue that you can make that argument. I don't necessarily know if it is. He should have, however, been held by NASCAR and been penalized for that happening because they've done it to Carson Hosor. They should have done it to Sammy Smith as well because it really affected potentially the outcome of this of this race. On the restart, AJ Allmendinger goes on to win the race. Uh, Ryan C comes home in second. And Justin Allgaier finally, finally stops crashing and gets a podium finish um, in the Xfinity Series. Now they head off to Homestead as well as Martinsville, and they'll determine who will race for a championship in Phoenix. As it currently stands, our four drivers headed to Phoenix right now. Obviously, there's still two races to go. Are Justin Allgaier, well, AJ Allmendinger locked in. Then Justin Allgaier, Cole Custer, and Chandler Smith. I'll be honest, Chandler Smith's out of that ride at the end of the year. He's not returning to Joe Gibbs Racing by the sounds of it. Not really sure what his plans are. You get him to Phoenix, though, that could be very dangerous. He is wildly good on flat tracks for the most part. He's good at Richmond. He's good at Phoenix, won there back in the springtime, and expect him to have a really, really good amount of speed when they get back there next month as well. And then last topic, Alex Bowman, we know, had a bad week. He got disqualified after last weekend's Roval race that took him out of the round of eight, kicked him out of the playoffs, put Joey Logano in. And things got worse from there. Alex was at home, realized that what had happened, he learned about his disqualification from Twitter, which that sucks for him, uh, knew his phone was about to blow up, so he went ahead and tossed it in the pool. Uh, iPhones are waterproof, so it didn't ruin his phone, which I guess is a good thing. However, he could probably have just gone down and bought another one. But when he tossed it in the pool, his phone thought he was in a car crash, and it dialed 911. 
that sucks for him. He also told reporters that this week he went out to get in his car and the windshield had cracked because it got cold out, which again, sucks for him as well. And his roof started leaking. So it's just uh, a trifecta of issues for Alex Bowman this week. And that sucks for him. But hopefully he comes out this weekend at Las Vegas and has a good amount of speed. But Poor Alex. Uh, yeah, when it rains, it pours sometimes, and you get kicked out of the playoffs, then your phone dials 911, then your windshield breaks, and then your roof starts leaking, and you're like, what else could possibly happen now? Um, at least he goes to a racetrack that he's won at, which is Las Vegas this weekend, and then he still has Martinsville. He's also won there as well, and expect those Hendrick cars to be wildly fast, once again, at all three of these racetracks coming up, and he's only got four more races until he gets to restart next year and attempt to, once again, make a run into the playoffs. I hate it for him because he's a guy that should be in the round of eight. He's put together a really good playoffs, and unfortunately, the team just cut the tolerance a little bit too close, um, and hey, sometimes when you play with fire, you get burned. It happens. We get it. But man, it does suck for him. And then to have a week like that, it just kind of piles on for it. Unfortunate for him. So let me know in the comments what you think about merch prices. AJ Allmendinger getting to race for a championship and Alex Bowman's bad week. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Break Hard Blog.